Aim down sights is a bad feature in first person shooters. It's become fairly ubiquitous now, and I think that's certainly for the worse. Let me explain why. First of all, let us define what aim down sights means. This is also known as scoping, iron sights, or zoom. Basically, it's the feature common in most modern first person shooter games where your FOV narrows, your weapon is centered on the screen, and you look down the sights of the gun. Typically, the gun will obscure a large part of the screen. Other features of ADS typically include increased accuracy, which consequently results in decreased accuracy when not using ADS. It can also mean decreased recoil and can include reduced bullet spread. It can often trigger a stronger aim assist, like your sights are snapping to a target. It often removes HUD elements and covers a large portion of your view model with the weapon's sights. It often involves a flinch feature, where your aim is knocked slightly off center when damage is received, particularly from an enemy player. The feeling ADS is supposed to provide is pretty obvious. It provides some sense of immersion by adding a realistic element into the game. It simulates at a very high level the sensation of aiming a weapon. Why is this feature that makes you stick your hands right in your face and makes me want to stick my hands into a blender so popular? How did it become ubiquitous? Well, like I said, immersion. It's realistic. I do understand how making typically gamey elements like crosshairs and aiming into an actual part of the game world into an animation can remove barriers between the player and the world they inhabit in the game. But games are full of unrealistic concessions. Game design is fundamentally meant to be fun and compelling, and developers ought to add a feature to their game if it unanimously improves the experience, no matter how unrealistic. So far, I've never met a person in real life who can pause and see menus, and when people did try to give themselves a real life HUD, we bullied them for it hard. Well, ADS took over quite slowly, Technically, the first FPS games had a perspective similar to what we know as ADS, where you're looking down the sights of your gun. I mean, it makes sense not having your arms sprout from the sides of your head where your ears should be. But in Doom, it was more like a phallus pointing out. Truly hellish. As games moved into full 3D, with games like Quake 2, the perspective permanently changed. Now your gun is mounted on your right shoulder. Now, let's say you want to get creative and introduce new features to this burgeoning genre of game. What's the best place to draw ideas from? Well, real life, of course. And many real life guns have scopes and iron sights. Games began to introduce scopes. The Team Fortress Quake mod introduced the sniper rifle, a real life weapon noticeably lacking from earlier shooters. GoldenEye 64 and Half-Life were notable for including a zoom feature for certain weapons to allow you to engage enemies from a distance. LucasArts Outlaws from 1997 had an actual scope attached to your gun. This scope worked like real scopes, zooming in on the area strictly within the bounds of the scope. This is most common today in simulation shooters, but is otherwise disregarded. This is due to the performance toll it has. You effectively need to render the world twice, one at the regular FOV, and one to be displayed within the bounds of the scope at a much tighter FOV. Scopes were beginning to become a common feature in FPS games. Developers added different view model and HUD adjustments to accompany the zooming. In most games, scoping was just a matter of tightening FOV. By 2001, in Halo, your scope removed some HUD elements, as well as adding a translucent circular overlay, as if you were using the scope of the pistol. This obscured parts of your field of vision. ADS truly came into being as a feature in America's Army from 2002. America's Army was a simulation game slash recruitment tool that was developed with the express intent of recreating modern warfare in a realistic fashion. This basically meant every weapon had to be aimed to be accurate and reduce recoil. This seems perfectly reasonable in a game aimed at realism and tactics. It was a tactical choice you make as the player. If you want to hit a shot accurately, you need to trade your mobility. Running and gunning is something that will get you killed in a real battle. You are not a one-man army. You need to be covered by your squad mates to make any movement. ADS would also later feature in games such as Viet Cong, 
it was slowly gaining acceptance as a feature in games based on modern warfare. It truly came into its own in 2003 with Call of Duty. This is the game that will carry this feature into relevance alongside its own success. Call of Duty, unlike games such as America's Army, was not primarily intended as a tactical simulation. It was a cinematic game, inspired by movies such as Saving Private Ryan, providing a gritty, realistic vision of World War II, but with more of a dramatized edge. ADS seems like a perfect feature to make this game feel realistic and immersive, to feel like a soldier on the ground in this albeit dramatized, setting. You could even argue it was still then a tactical decision, although your squad mates were very scripted. This was the most significant jump of the ADS feature coming out of a purely simulation setting. ADS was still not the norm. It was a feature in every COD game, but Call of Duty was not yet the standard. Halo and its method of scoping was the norm until basically 2009. In Halo, naturally, you were a super soldier and did not have to slow down at all to aim. You didn't have an animation to zoom either. Your helmet just connected to the gun or something. It was certainly empowering. Recoil was independent of your movement and you did not flinch at all when shot. Instead, you would simply be removed from scope. You had a descoping mechanic to avoid ranged weapons being too powerful. Halo 3 finally slid below Modern Warfare 2 in 2009, at the very end of its life cycle, before promptly sliding down into the gutter. With that, Call of Duty took the position of top shooter, and with it, aim down sights became the standard. Now, let's look at aim down sights in Call of Duty. I think it's fair to say that it isn't a tactical choice. Team play, much like having a father or not saying racial slurs is an alien concept to Call of Duty players. Call of Duty is widely regarded as a run and gun game focused on speed, while ADS as a mechanic seems firmly in opposition to this principle. While moving, your reticle expands significantly and with it your accuracy is reduced while recoil is increased. To shoot with any level of accuracy, you have to aim down sight, which slows your movement speed and narrows your FOV. In Call of Duty, ADS is essentially used as an auto-aim enable button. It basically prompted the game to snap onto the enemy. In fact, the tutorial directly hints this idea. It is a mental trigger that the fight has commenced. It feels good when the aim assist system is in line with the player expectations, that it kicks in the moment the player wishes to commence combat by using ADS. This is why it's so easy to tell when somebody is a COD player. They have a Pavlovian response in every game to aim down sights as soon as they enter a gun battle. It produces frustration when they want to do something they're so conditioned to doing just to have it not behave the way they expect. Playtests across the industry naturally picked this up over years of COD's market success. This brings up the question of multitasking, or rather, why modern FPS fans absolutely hate multitasking. Thinking about multiple tasks at once can be very challenging and requires a lot of mental energy that a casual game may not want to occupy. Thus, it is advantageous to isolate mechanics from each other, such that you do not have to think about them simultaneously. ADS serves the function of separating shooting and aim from movement. Sprint is a feature that serves a similar function. Sprint separates navigation across the map from every other action. Games that do not require the player to simultaneously think about their movement on multiple axes are often easier to pick up and have a lower barrier to entry for newer and lesser skilled players. Clearly demarcating movement and shooting creates a lower barrier to entry. Again, Call of Duty is often referred to as a run and gun game, but the truth is it's a run or gun game. In COD, you only have to worry about navigating the map quickly in the direction you're facing, aiming, or regular movement at any given time. In a game like, say, Doom, you have to be concerned about aiming and movement in any direction, in every gun battle, all simultaneously. This often involves skills that can be challenging for new players and put things like map knowledge to the test. You have to be aware of the rocks and cover around, even what isn't in your line of sight. There's a natural tendency among 
allowing new players to look in the direction they're going, like when they're running for cover, when in fact it's always better to shoot at the enemy that's shooting at you while you're running into cover. Have you ever seen an old person playing a first person shooter game? Or someone who's really young just on their first ever game? It is challenging to adapt to the use of both thumbsticks simultaneously, or keyboard and mouse. Now, why is ADS bad? Many games focus on player empowerment, the power fantasy. It's a common philosophical term you'll hear developers use to describe their approach to design, especially in first person shooters. It's simple, make the player feel powerful, like they are expressing their skills. Games should provide challenge commensurate with the player's skill, but they shouldn't challenge players 100% of the time. They should allow some moments for the player to express mastery over their environment. There are many ways developers can hope to achieve player empowerment. One direction I've seen many games going in over the past few years is by using speed, like a return to classic shooters. This is how they challenge players and ultimately make them feel powerful, by making the player play faster. Look at games like Titanfall or Doom Eternal. They have a certain level of spectacle as a result of their speed. This helps the player power fantasy. The thing is, many developers fail to understand how to make their games actually fast. All too often, devs will mistake in-game movement speed for actual speed of the game. Here's the thing, speed isn't a strictly defined thing, it is a feeling. It is when you have to do a lot of real-time strategizing. It is how quickly the game as a whole moves relative to the player. Fear has an incredibly sluggish movement speed, and yet, the games move quite quickly. I have to think of a game like Titanfall. It was focused on speed, it had some really cool mechanics that could allow for extremely quick travel, and its navigation did require a lot of real-time strategizing. With some thought, you could intelligently traverse the map in a very brief amount of time. The navigation was fast and very rewarding, but the combat was not. Here's the thing, Titanfall was made by former COD developers. At the time, recently exiled by Activision execs from the Cosby suite of their ivory tower, Titanfall de facto adopted many of the design principles from Call of Duty. Things such as loadouts, sprint, human enemies, and yes, ADS. The combat in Titanfall is fairly weak. It's why Titanfall 2, despite still being very good, isn't one of my favorite FPS campaigns. Think of the enemies, they're mostly just dudes, hitscan dudes. You'd think they'd have some enemy designs that promote more dodging and movement in their, you know, movement based shooter. So where does ADS come in? ADS as a mechanic means that to shoot accurately, you had to slow down considerably. Yes, the hip fire was still very useful in Titanfall, but that doesn't change the fact that to be as accurate as possible, you need to stand still in a movement shooter. It was cool that you had all these options to traverse the map, but what difference did it make when you still lost to the dude sitting on that building with the Kraber? ADS and Sprint, for good measure, are disempowering. I find it interesting that many games empower you by explicitly negating the effects of these features, by making it so that the features are less of a factor in your gameplay. How many games have perks or upgrades like better hipfire accuracy, faster movement while aiming down sight, reducing flinch, or not having your heart obscured by aim down sights. Take a look at Payday 2. There are upgrades to effectively narrow the gap between ADS and hipfire, negate the feature. There's an upgrade that lets you reload while sprinting, one that lets you sprint in any direction, one that lets you shoot while sprinting. If you get enough upgrades, you might even reach the point where your movement is as good as in any classic shooter. It's an implicit admission that classic shooter movement and aiming were more empowering, that it is an upgrade over your regular movement. Destiny 2 is another such game with similar perks on its weapons, ones that make you move faster while aiming down sight, or not even needing to aim down sight at all. I got an interesting comment on a previous video, and I want to say that I appreciate all of your comments. This one stood out to me regarding Halo Infinite, saying that they managed to make Halo Infinite feel good despite not having ADS. On the contrary, 
I think it feels good because it does not have ADS. Interestingly, Destiny gives us quite a solid point of comparison between the two styles. The recent Bungie throwback event saw the addition of several new weapons, including one known as the BXR-55 Battler. Got to wonder what this might be a reference to. Maybe it was, uh, oh yeah, Gex3D. Okay, no, apparently it was Halo. And I thought this event was really cool because they went above and beyond with the references. They not only recreated the weapons in the visual style of Destiny, but they actually mimicked the gameplay attributes as well. The gun functions similarly to the battle rifle in Halo. What does this actually mean? Its reticle doesn't expand. It remains accurate while moving. Its hip fire is improved and the ADS works similarly to scope in classic Halo. Near instant. And people loved it. It felt so much better to use than any other pulse rifle in the game. Besides the fact that people found it unforgiving with damage output, but that's a destiny thing. The gun itself felt great. And Destiny is a game about player empowerment. A vague concept, but it has a lot to do with how the game feels to play. And the strong hip fire with a classic style scope setup felt good. If you'll remember back to before, many games focus on player empowerment, the power fantasy. Another important feature of player empowerment is competence, making the player feel like they always have a challenge commensurate with their skill. This necessarily means that the player should always be increasing their skill. This is also what allows skill expression. To recap, this is when the game has moments when it pulls back on the throttle to allow the player to demonstrate their improvement in skills. Basically, let you style on them, as the zoomers would say. Now, as I established earlier, Games with ADS segregate movement from aiming. This requires less multitasking and less real-time strategizing. This is good for new players, so they do not get overwhelmed. It's accessible, but it makes for a shallower experience. If you truly want your game to get the player to improve and later provide opportunities for skill expression, you'll need to challenge them. And multitasking in FPS games is essential to challenge and engage the player. Forcing the player to be aware of their environment and their enemies simultaneously is something that develops player skills. Environmental awareness is a skill present in every first person shooter, but it is discussed to a greater extent in FPS that aren't based around ADS and a sprint as well. Because in those games, you need to know what's around you without even seeing it. You need to create a mental map of the environment. This is perhaps also why so many environments from classic shooters are so much more memorable, at least campaign areas. Multiplayer maps you've played on a billion times don't count. This mental cartography, of course, allows for great levels of skill expression. If you've seen a pro in classic shooters, this becomes apparent. Their map knowledge allows insane and inhuman feats. They seem to have a sixth sense, knowing exactly where to go and when, knowing everything that's happening on the map and where everything is. Breezing through the map while not even looking where they're going. Now, do I think ADS should be exercised from games entirely? No. I think there's a variety of first-person shooters where aim down sights is required. Tactical and simulation shooters. Somebody will inevitably ask why I didn't bring up realism and tactical shooters in the comments. I want you to admonish that person for not watching the whole video. As I said in the beginning, ADS is a tactical choice. It makes sense in games that place realism over player empowerment. Games where your shots actually come out of your gun instead of the middle of your head. Sacrificing mobility for accuracy makes sense in a team-based game where you can die in one hit. It forces you to be slow and methodical. Ultimately, I think games should take a step back and try to justify their features. Start from square one. Instead of following industry orthodoxy, think, why does this game need this feature? What are our goals? How does this help achieve those goals? Developers should design 
with intentionality. I believe that when developers start from ground zero and are aware of why they're adding certain features, features like ADS added just for the sake of it will be less common. When you design a game to empower the player, consider how every feature supports this and whether certain features like ADS really aid this goal. That is why I think aim down sights is a bad feature. Thanks for watching, like the video, and subscribe. Goodbye.